Good morning, dear colleagues. My name is Tarek al Tawil, and I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons at the National Institute of Neuromotor System in Cairo. My talk today will be on the reliability of distal looking femoral plate for different supracondylar femoral osteotomies, clinical cases, and surgical technique. I'm sure you all know that the uh, distal femoral looking plate uh, has been and is still uh, used for uh, supracondylar femoral uh, fractures. And uh, you know that the uh, plate together with the screws and the fracture fragments, they all form one unit. And uh, that's the uh, post-op uh, x-ray and a few weeks after healing. Supracondylar femoral osteotomy has been used in correcting different deformities affecting the femur or the knee. Many implants and even external fixators have been used to fix uh, for fixation of these osteotomies. Recently, with the great success of the locking plates, many companies introduced many designs for different supracondylar femoral osteotomies to fit the osteotomy type. We present here our experience in using one implant for almost all types of supracondylar femoral osteotomies in 27 femurs, which is the uh, trauma distal femoral locking plate as a rigid and reliable fixation. The point is the locking plate works as an internal external fixator, so it's not necessary to come in full contact or contour with the bone fragments after the osteotomy. The desired position of the osteotomy fragments is set, then the plate is laid on and screws applied. Um, in the literature, there have been uh, many implants uh, to fix this uh, sort of osteotomy. As you can see here, DCS, uh, Pudo plate, and many others. Uh, intramedullary uh, nail was used as well, as you can see from here. And by using the uh, ring external uh, fixators, whether with the Elizarov technique or the uh, more recent, the spatial frame. And if you go um, to literature or to uh, the market, actually, you would find many types of uh, distal femoral looking plates for different types of osteotomies. And you may see this one, this one, and this one. And this is one with four holes. And this is with five distal holes. And another one with three. And this uh, nice shape. And this L-shaped. And this one. So from what we've seen, uh, that there are many different uh, plates uh, on the market for uh, different types of osteotomies and uh, one blade may not uh, fit uh, the other osteotomy and so this may be a bit confusing to surgeons and may be expensive as well and uh, actually uh, what uh, was used to be done uh, in the past is to apply a high above knee uh, cast for a closing wedge uh, and as you can see from this case there is a perfect alignment and it's very difficult to see where was the osteotomy uh, this way of casting may be used in uh, uh, younger patients and uh, who are slim and uh, may uh, be ready to accept this uh, way of management, but uh, may not be suitable at all for uh, older patients or for um, obese patients. In this work, the uh, standard trauma distal femoral looking plate was used. The distal femoral looking plate was used for fixation of different types of supracondylar osteotomies like open wedge, closing wedge, derotation of distal femur, osteotomy for multi-planar deformity like flexion and valgus in one knee. The indication for the uh, osteotomy was corrective derotation for excessive femoral antiversion, 
severe spastic knee internal rotation in CB patients, flexion deformity in chronic polio patients with hand knee gait, and or genovalgum, correction of malunion of all the fractures or osteotomies. It was not used in growing bones. All CP patients were of normal mentality. We did not try this technique on any CP patient with mental retardation. Operation was done with patients supine under a C arm, general or a spinal anesthesia. No drain was used in any of these cases. Antibiotic was used preoperatively and for two further doses. Back slab or cylinder cast was applied in two CP patients postoperatively to avoid flexion contracture from pain and excessive spasm. Patients were allowed partial weight bearing on beyond callus, follow up continuous till osteotomy union, and the improvement of function. Fixing an osteotomy is not like fixing a fracture, as the muscles and other soft tissue structures, periosteum muscles and tendons, all the adhesions will not be in balance after osteotomy as after reduction of fracture. With osteotomies, the soft tissues may be under tension, thus resisting the uh, new position planned by the osteotomy. Excessive femoral antiversion or severe spastic femoral internal rotation in cerebral palsy patients could be corrected by derotation osteotomy and internal fixation, whether proximally or distally, according to the age of the patient. And this is the girl with this uh, uh, CT scans. She is a 13-year-old girl with severe femoral antiversion and distal femoral locking plate couldn't be used here as the physis is still open. And we planned for her to do a subtrochanteric derotation osteotomy and apply a strong broad uh, femoral DCP and you notice here that uh, we used five screws uh, proximal to the osteotomy and another five screws distal. And this is because uh, it's not like fixing a fracture in this area by a plate, but we uh, did uh, the rotation at the osteotomy side. And this means that we put the muscles um, periosteum and soft tissues around this under tension and that the femur tends to retain its original uh, position. So the uh, stresses on the uh, plate are not as in are actually more than uh, when a fracture. This is a 21 year old female. Uh, severely affected by CP, obviously affecting the uh, four uh, limbs. And actually, uh, if you can see a bilateral uh, geno uh, vulga here, here, it's not true. It's because of the excessive spasm causing uh, internal rotation of both uh, knees. Because if, you, uh, if she lies in bed and you press on the knees, you'll find that the alignment is quite perfect. And this is uh, the uh, CT cuts. And uh, if you look at uh, here, you may see that the uh, antiversion at the uh, proximal level of the uh, femur is quite acceptable, uh, about uh, 15, 10 or 15 degrees or slightly more. But at the knee level, there is uh, obvious internal rotation of both knees. And what we do is, we do a supracondylar osteotomy under image intensifier. And before we complete our osteotomy, we apply our plate and fix it proximally and distally with uh, a K wire. And uh, the more important is to fix the uh, distal part of the plate to the distal fragment and then uh, as uh, while when you uh, rotate the proximal fragment the femoral shaft when you rotate it um, it's not 
um, it will not cause any problem whether the uh, plate will lie on the uh, lateral side or posterolateral or anterolateral whatsoever you rotate but actually on the distal fragment if you fix the uh, proximal uh, part of the plate first and then you try to rotate the condyles the uh, position of the uh, distal part of the plate may not fit the uh, lateral femoral condyle properly so it's always better to uh, position the plate first distally and fix it with uh, a K wire on the distal small hole and then even with one screw in the middle and then you uh, complete your osteotomy and gently uh, rotate the femur while you have in hands uh, 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 plate holding forceps so when you reach the proper position and check it on the uh, under direct uh, viewing and under image and transfer and when you are happy you apply your uh, plate holding and uh, you continue uh, your uh, with your screws and as you can see here and uh, that there is uh, a, a good degree of rotation as uh, uh, seen uh, from the view on the lateral uh, x-ray here this is uh, while applying the plate and uh, as you can see here the distal screws have been completely applied and then the saw is still we, we didn't complete our osteotomy actually we didn't complete the osteotomy and so we finished the osteotomy we rotate the femur and we check that the uh, plate lies nicely on the shaft of the femur and then we do our uh, fixation proximally as uh, seen here and this is the girl after the uh, bilateral correction and you can see the uh, nice alignment now with her uh, lower limb in comparison to the uh, condition before uh, this is an ancient Egyptian tablet which shows a man affected by uh, chronic poliomyelitis and you can notice the uh, shortening of his uh, one of his legs and the obvious equinus deformity and he's uh, walking with a stick and uh, these are the African children at some uh, stage uh, with uh, uh, many cases uh, of poliomyelitis and this map in 1988 shows that most parts of the world are affected by the disease but as you can see it resolves now to become much less and less uh, in poliomyelitis flexion contracture of the knee may result from imbalance between the quadriceps femoris and flexors of the knee obviously the uh, quadriceps is affected here and uh, we uh, to correct this we do an um, osteotomy supracondylar femoral osteotomy closing wedge and this causes a slight overextension of the knee which um, allows the patient walks without uh, hand knee gait and uh, this is uh, one of the cases and you can see if you compare this uh, 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 leg uh, with the other one uh, on this uh, pelvic x-ray you can notice that one of the femurs is larger than the other and this uh, 36 years old woman had a uh, right uh, lower limb polio with knee flexion and had a hand knee gait uh, to walk with the flexed knee because the quadriceps cannot extend the knee on walking though they have to support the body weight on the knee and you can notice how uh, nice was done the uh, supracondylar femoral osteotomy 
quite well closed nicely and uh, healed this is the lady after having the x-ray if you look on the left hand side you can see that there is slight uh, extension of her knee and the arrow is pointing to the uh, treated knee Heba who is a 33 years old female uh, is another case of chronic poliomyelitis with uh, flexion deformity she had an extension uh, osteotomy uh, with uh, closing wedge and this x-ray is two years following her operation and you can see the very nice healing of the osteotomy and this is another case of young man 24 years old with uh, chronic polymerized flexion deformity walks with a hand knee gait and he had uh, this supracondyl femoral uh, osteotomy and as you can see that the uh, line osteotomy of the osteotomy uh, with a closing wedge is uh, quite uh, clear here and with uh, minimum if any disruption of the uh, posterior cortex as it's a uh, closing wedge anteriorly and you can find the uh, difference in the angle of extension this one and now post op it's uh, more now and this is the uh, young man standing with the uh, incision a bit uh, long and this is uh, another case of a 26 years man same technique and another 29 year old man with uh, chronic polio who had the uh, extension osteotomy this adequate implants and bad techniques can lead to disasters and malunions something like this and uh, this rather very poor fixation and this is the result and uh, trying to use um, an external fixator unfortunately very bad ending so the distal femoral looking plate could be used for correction uh, osteotomy of supracondylar uh, malunion This is an old mal united uh, supracondylar osteotomy, and we uh, had to uh, redo it again, removing the uh, wedge on the lateral side, doing the correction, and as you can see, a very nice alignment of the uh, osteotomy now. And here, the uh, early post op x ray, and a few weeks following the operation with a very nice complete union the distal femoral looking plate could be used for correction of multi planar deformity uh, this is an example uh, of a lady 31 year old with uh, left uh, lower limb polymyelitis with flexion deformity and uh, valgus deformity as well so uh, this uh, lady with uh, multi planar deformity uh, she had flexion in the sagittal plane and uh, valgus in the uh, coronal plane. We'll have uh, supracondylar femoral osteotomy corrected and fixed with a distal femoral looking plate, as we are going to see. And this is what we have done under the uh, image intensifier. We did an osteotomy and we tried our best that the um, osteotomy surface on both fragments of the bone can um, contact each other as maximum as possible to allow early healing and we use this uh, distal femoral looking plate as you can see whether on the AP or on the lateral view and this is um, a post-op x-ray showing you the healing of the uh, osteotomy side and co correction of the alignment this is the same lady after correction so the vulgus has been uh, corrected and now we have full extension of the knee and here we show 
the uh, complete correction of the deformity, whether of the uh, flexion deformity or of the valgus deformity. And we used it for open wedge osteotomy as well. Uh, this 48 years old woman with coronal polio is an example for uh, open wedge uh, supracondylar osteotomy with a fixation with a uh, distal looking femoral uh, plate. And as you can see, this is the post op and the uh, open uh, wedge is quite obvious here. And this is a few months after the operation with uh, complete healing of the osteotomy. This is a 14-year-old girl with uh, bilateral genovalgum, and from the X-ray, obviously the deformity is from the femur. And in this uh, case, whether you do a medial closing wedge, which we will not be using the distal looking femoral plate, or you do a lateral open wedge in which we use the uh, distal femoral looking plate. As you can see, these are uh, serial images taken during the operation by the uh, image intensifier. And you can see uh, the uh, vulgus coming from the femur. And we do the uh, osteotomy and uh, to uh, retain it and see uh, which uh, size will correct the deformity complete, we just uh, use uh, uh, different sizes of uh, poodle plate or poodle-like plates. And when we reach the uh, alignment that we like to have, we cover one the, uh, the osteotomy with the plate, this looking femoral plate, and we uh, try to fix it with K-wire and one screw, and then we remove the uh, uh, poodle plate and complete your uh, fixation and obviously you can see the opening wedge here. And this is the, uh, again, this is the immediate post-op x-ray, and this is a larger view, and this is the um, opening wedge, and you may notice there is no back slab, no drain, as this uh, plate is uh, quite rigid. And this is after complete healing of the osteotomy and filling of the uh, uh, osteotomy with a newborn formation. This is the uh, right leg, and you can see the nice alignment. The left one was not uh, done yet. So if we talk about the results, uh, no neurovascular injury, no deep infection. We had uh, two superficial infections, which uh, were managed by proper dressing and antibiotic. All osteotomies united in 8 to 12 weeks. There were no failure of metal work. Polio patients could abandon hand knee gait shortly after union. One patient complained of pain in the knee on walking following the healing. Two CB patients had bilateral uh, cylinder casts a few days following their uh, operations as they developed a moderate degree of uh, spastic flexion postoperatively. In uh, their second uh, operation on the uh, second uh, leg, uh, we uh, applied immediate back slab uh, after uh, finishing our operation to avoid the uh, scenario that happened to the first uh, leg. Most patients were satisfied with the operation. Uh, we had two polio patients were not satisfied as one continued to complain of uh, knee pain postoperatively, while the um, other one didn't feel that we uh, improved him as expected. This was managed by further rehabilitation. And we had two CB uh, limps in two different patients were slightly undercorrected, but patients were satisfied. So, in conclusion, the standard trauma distal femoral looking plate is a strong and reliable implant in fixation of different types of supracondylar osteotomy. It may not be suitable to apply a high above knee cast in an adult uh, for long term management, especially females and overweight people. With the advancement of fixation methods, 
The practice of using cast for immobilization of supracondylar osteotomies should not be used anymore. Most surgeons are familiar with the application of the distal femoral looking plate. It may be easier than other specially designed osteotomy plates in the market and definitely less costly. It allows early mobilization of the knee joint and early weight bearing. Thank you for watching and I hope to meet you on another presentation.